Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Interpreting Constellation Diagrams. In this presentation, we'll explain how constellation diagrams can be used to diagnose modulation quality issues in digital RF communications. This presentation assumes a basic understanding of constellation diagrams and uses QAM for most of the examples. If you're unfamiliar with these topics or would like a brief refresher, you may want to watch the presentation Understanding APSK and QAM before beginning this presentation. Most RF digital data transmission is based on vector signals in which the magnitude and or phase of the carrier is shifted between discrete states in order to convey information. If we represent these vectors using polar coordinates and record the endpoints at each sample or symbol time, this collection of vector endpoints can be used to create so-called constellation diagrams that show the magnitude and phase of the carrier at each sample or symbol time. Constellation diagrams are very useful in visualizing the different states or symbols of a given modulation scheme. For example, this constellation diagram has 16 symbols arranged in the square shape produced by quadrature amplitude modulation or QAM. And as we're about to see, constellation diagrams are also very useful in troubleshooting issues affecting modulation accuracy. By visually inspecting the constellation diagram of a received signal, we can often determine the cause or causes of deviations from the ideal or reference constellation points. A constellation diagram only shows the decision points at each sample time. Another way of representing vector modulated signals are vector diagrams, which show the path taken between the decision points. This means that vector diagrams are made up of lines rather than points. Vector diagrams are often very useful in differentiating between different modulation variants. For example, Regular PSK and offset PSK have identical constellation diagrams, but it's easy to distinguish between them using vector diagrams. Some sources of error can be diagnosed using vector diagrams, but generally speaking, constellation diagrams are more useful in most cases, and in this presentation, we'll only be covering constellation diagrams. So how do we identify and or diagnose modulation issues using constellation diagrams? Errors or impairments in any RF communication system can be caused by the transmitter, the receiver, and or the channel, that is the medium through which the signal propagates. There are many numerical measures of modulation quality, such as error vector magnitude or EVM, but these values often do not provide much insight into the nature or causes of the errors. However, many common types of error can be identified by visually inspecting or looking at a constellation diagram. These types fall into four main categories. First, amplitude linearity issues usually move some of the points towards the origin. Another type of amplitude issue is noise, which causes the received points to spread out around the ideal or reference points. Undesired changes in the phase of the carrier cause the points to rotate with respect to the origin. And finally, imperfections in the IQ modulator or demodulator can alter the geometry of the constellation. In the remainder of this presentation, We'll look at each of these types of impairments and how they can be identified using constellation diagrams. Let's start with phase errors or phase noise because this is very easy to recognize in constellation diagrams. Phase noise is an unintentional or undesired variation in the phase of the transmitted carrier. Since vector signals convey information using changes in phase, random fluctuations in the phase of the signal can lead to incorrect demodulation at the receiver. On a constellation diagram, variations in the phase cause the points to be rotated with respect to the origin, and this will affect all of the points in the constellation, creating curved, arc-like segments at each reference point. As the level of phase noise increases, the amount of rotation also increases, and the arcs become longer. It's important to remember that phase errors are generally caused by the transmitter or receiver, not by propagation through the channel. Now let's move on to amplitude effects, starting with compression. Compression is most often associated with amplifiers and refers to the fact that amplifiers do not provide the same amount of amplification for all input levels. In almost all cases, the gain provided by an amplifier is lower for higher input powers, and this reduced gain at higher powers is what's meant by compression. In constellation diagrams, signal amplitude or magnitude is distance from the origin, so the further a point is from the origin, the higher its amplitude. If the amplifier goes into compression, these outer points are amplified less than the inner points, 
causing these points to be pulled in towards the origin. Since amplifiers are used in both transmitters as well as receivers, distortion may be caused by compression on one or both ends. Noise is another type of amplitude issue in digital transmission systems. When the signal to noise ratio, or SNR, is low, this will cause the points to spread out from the ideal or reference points. As the SNR decreases, the points become further and further spread apart. If the noise is wideband or uncorrelated, such as the noise shown here in red, the constellation points will be more or less randomly or uniformly distributed around the ideal points. Let's compare this to what happens when the noise is not wideband. In-band spurious refers to narrowband interferers, or spurs, that fall within the bandwidth of the modulated signal. These spurs often create circles around the constellation reference points, and the radius of these circles depends on the level or amplitude of the spurious signal. As the level of the spurious signal increases, the radius of these circles also increases. Note, however, that in the case of low-level spurs, it may be difficult to see these circles without zooming in to the individual constellation points. Although we've been looking at symbols or points on constellations as representing a magnitude and a phase, another way to represent these values is in terms of something called I and Q. As you may already know, most RF vector signals are produced using an IQ modulator, which takes as its input an in phase, or I channel, and a quadrature, or Q channel. These values are mixed with a local oscillator, but in the Q path, the phase of this oscillator has been shifted by 90 degrees. Quadrature means shifted by 90 degrees. These two components are then combined to produce the modulated vector signal. The two axes on our constellation diagram, therefore, correspond to the magnitudes of the I and Q channels. And as we're about to see, imperfections in the transmit IQ modulator, or receive IQ demodulator, will also distort the constellation. The first IQ problem we'll look at is IQ gain imbalance. Ideally, the I and Q channels should have equal gain, and this gives most QAM constellations their characteristic square shape. IQ gain imbalance occurs when there's a difference between the gain of these two components. IQ gain imbalance is relatively easy to diagnose in constellation diagrams because it causes the constellation to be stretched, that is, it becomes more rectangular than square. This distortion, or stretching, is proportional to the gain imbalance, and higher levels of gain imbalance lead to increased stretching of the overall constellation. As we just mentioned, most QAM constellations are arranged in a square shape, with the horizontal and vertical edges ideally being perpendicular, that is, at right angles to each other. Quadrature error, also sometimes called quadrature offset or quadrature skew, occurs when the I and Q signals are not separated by precisely 90 degrees. This causes the constellation to become tilted or trapezoidal. As the amount of deviation from this 90 degree separation increases, the constellation becomes increasingly tilted, leading to a higher probability of bit errors. So let's summarize what we've covered. Constellation diagrams are commonly used to represent the different states or symbols in digital modulation schemes, with each point corresponding to a magnitude and phase, or to a pair of I and Q values. Visual inspection of constellation diagrams can often be very helpful in detecting and diagnosing the nature of impairments in a digital transmission system. There are several common problems that can be diagnosed in this way. These include phase noise and amplitude effects such as compression. The presence of both wideband and narrowband noise, or a low signal-to-noise ratio, are also easily seen in a constellation diagram, and changes in the geometry of the constellation usually indicate IQ modulator or demodulator imperfections, such as gain or quadrature imbalance. This concludes our presentation, Interpreting Constellation Diagrams. If you'd like to learn more about digital modulation and vector signal generation or analysis, please see the links in the video description. Thanks for watching.